What'd you see? Conflict. What'd you see? That's a great conversation. Church. It's true. That's What'd you see? Go ahead, Chief. Uh, the, the, the general held, like, he basically held from here to his face and said, like, uh, you're, you're claiming that we're taking this land from you when, when you did this to your own people. You explain, know, explain. You're doing the same thing later. See, because the, 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 there's, there's, there's an accusation that Europeans, the white man, stole the land from the Indians. And some of you didn't even give it a second thought. You said, yeah, that, make, that tracks. You're an idiot. You've not been taught to critical think. It's okay to ask questions. I expect you to ask, ask questions. And the reality is, you ask these people, who the Indians get the land from? And where'd they get it? They defeated the tribe that was before them. They massacred the tribe that was before them. And where'd they get the land from? And where'd they get the land from? And for generations, that's all they did. So how were all nations? All nations formed. Every single nation. Conquest. Every single nation was formed by conquest. But we isolate America. You know, because Christian men have failed America, America is a joke in the eyes of the world. America used to be the place to go, and people dreamed about going to America. I want you to hear something on this. There's only one nation on the planet that you can go to and, 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 and I don't, this is in my notes, I really don't want to get there. Now, there's only one nation on the planet that you can go to and actually uh, receive citizenship and become a full-fledged member of that nation. Is it possible for all of us, let's say we all want to move to Japan and we get our green cards and immigration cards for Japan, can you become a Japanese? No. Nope. Can you do it in Spain, France, Portugal, Africa, anywhere in Africa? Bolivia, anywhere. Can you, go in, can you go to China and become Chinese? There's only one nation where you can go and actually be adopted into their culture and be called an American. USA, USA. Why is that? And people knew it. And the people died and wanted to get to America. What happened? I think it was Jefferson. I think he said, the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. The price of liberty is eternal vigilance. I, I'm not sure if that was Jefferson or not, but the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. The price of your freedom is eternal vigilance, which means you have to be, always be on your guard. Because as soon as you put your guard down, what happens? You're gonna lose it. There's, um, this ain't in my notes, but I gotta say this. Have you guys, who knows what term limits are? Term limits with politicians. Term limits. And so basically, Go ahead, say it. It's how long you can spend in a certain <clears throat> X amount of years. Yeah, like, like term limits for the president is two terms. He gets two terms. That's it. Right? And so senators, there are no term limits. Congressmen, there are no term limits. And there's a lot of Americans now saying, we got career politicians. We should institute term limits. Show of hands, who agrees with that? If I could, I'd slap every one of you. That's a lazy cop-out thing to do. I don't say that lightly. It's a lazy cop-out thing to do. Because you think by simply making another law, you can stop the corruption. What if I ran for Congress or a senator and you limited me to just one or two terms? See, what you're doing, you're, when you say, let's just institute term limits, what you're doing, you're, you're not just killing the career politicians, but you're killing good politicians, too. Why would I go there? Whose fault, who, whose responsibility is it to keep American politics clean? Us. Us. And to be able to just say, let's just do term limits. That's, that's cheap. That's the easy way out. And what you're doing, you're, you're penalizing somebody who's probably go, a good senator, a good spirit-filled Christian. You, pe you want to penalize him with, with only two terms? Oh, no, I want a senator, if he's spirit-filled, God-fearing. I want him in there for as long as he can be in there making change, godly change. I'm, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. So check this out. I want you guys to read this. I don't know if you can... Mayf Mayflower Compact. Anybody know? Okay, when was this written? 1620. That's about 128 years after Columbus. 
1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, right? So about 128 years later, the Mayflower Compact. Now, what was their primary mission? Can you guys read? I know it's small print, but can you read some of that? No. It's right there. This is what they wrote. This before they got off the boat. You know they missed their mark. They were supposed to go to Virginia. Ended up in, in Plymouth with Massachusetts. They missed, right? And so they said before we get off the boat, because we're supposed to go to Virginia where there was a colony already settled type of thing, and we had order. We're not going to have order. So let's all get together and sign this thing. And this is what they agreed. And they started off. Usually you end a prayer or a document. You end it with in the name of God, Amen. They started this document with. In the name of God, amen. And then he goes, the name's uh, by the grace of God, having undertaken for the glory of God and advancement of the Christian faith. What was the primary reason for coming to America? Right there. They took the Bible seriously. They knew the world. We called it, back then, they, they called the world unexplored. They called it dark because civilized, you know, Europe was civilized somewhat. Right? And so the, the more they expanded, they went into Africa, they went into uh, uh, South America and uh, North America, and they realized it's, it, they're dark continents. And what were Christians supposed to do? I'll get into this in a second. Bring the, gospel, so like Bring the light. Bring the light. And so this is what they all signed. So in the name of God, by the grace of God, for the glory of God, and for the advancement of the Christian faith. I have to say this because America is a Judeo-Christian nation. We had a president, Barack Hussein Obama, who said that Islam is woven into the very fabric of our nation. And we had Christians and say, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. And none of that's true. There is not a single shred of Islam in anything to do that right there. Because Islam is a gutter religion. It's a lie. It just is. And I, I don't, I'm not speaking just against Islam. I'm speaking against every faith that's not Christian. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. What did Jesus say? I'm the way. I'm, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man gets to the Father except through me. He's basically saying, I'm the only one who can pay for your sins. I'm the truth. And so if you don't believe in me, you're not going to make it. So if he said he's the exclusive truth, Christianity is the exclusive truth, what does that say about every other faith that's out there? It's a lie. Confucianism, Taoism, Buddhism, uh, Islam, oh, Wiccanism, well, just all this stuff. They're lies. Jesus said it. Take it up with him. He said he's the exclusive truth. You guys okay? Yes. Man. So, don't just know this, Judeo-Christian. Um, these are some great books, one of the best books I've read. Full of information. It was a page turner. It was just data, data, data. You're like, holy cow, holy smoly. Great book. If you buy this book, hard copy, and you don't like it, I'll buy it from you. Just bring it to me. I'll buy it from you because I can use this book. He's a great. Let me get out of your way. This is this is this is. He wrote this maybe ten years ago. That's a good book too. Maybe not even ten years ago. Maybe six years ago. Great book too. America. Imagine a world without her. What would have happened if America was never established? Boy, America, America set the tone for righteousness and godly living. America set the tone. I'll explain. Um, a lot of people wonder, was Christopher Columbus a Christian? Well, let's, let's, who can read this? Who can read? <laughs> you don't even speak English. Jack, can you read that? Nice and loud. Listen, this is out of Columbus's journal. Nice and loud. Simply the, 
fulfillment of what Isaiah had prophesied. No one should fear to undertake any task in the name of our Savior, if it is just, and if the intention is purely for his holy service. The working out of all things has been assigned to each person by our Lord, but it all happens according to his sovereign will, even though he gives advice. He lacks nothing that is in the power of men to give him. Oh, and what a gracious Lord, who desires that people should perform for him those things which are which he holds himself responsible. Day and night, moment by moment, everyone should express their most devoted gratitude to him. This is they, they argue and say he wasn't a Christian. Definitely a Christian. And so he said, um, for the execution of this journey to the Indies, I did not make use of intelligence, mathematics, or maps. How did he sail? By faith. By faith. You know what, Christopher, you know what that means? It literally means light bearer. And so he, 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 he had the calling of God on his life from youth, and he knew he was called to do something grand. And he, man, you talk about gonads, this dude. Go ahead. What, what's that quote from? That's his journal. That's his, his personal journals. Yeah, 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 there's a footnote right there. If you get the book, you'll see the footnote right there. Columbus, his personal journals, he talked about God a lot. Now, was he perfect? No. Did he make, are you perfect? No. Yet God still calls you to get up and do something right. He still calls you to faith. And if you wait for you, for you to get perfect, you'll never do anything because you're never going to be perfect. You're going to be standing before the Lord saying, I, I never got it all together. I promise you. Um, just so you know, these were all the scriptures that were in the prayer. All right, anybody need them? Because them? if not, I'm going to go through it. Here we go. Bam, let's jump into this. Who's heard of Manifest Destiny? Okay. What do you think Manifest Destiny is? I thought you had your hand up. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a will. It's a will. No. What's Manifest Destiny? Okay, not bad, not bad. What are you going to say? I'll say trying to do what you were supposed to do. That's not bad. But see, this term was, was given to America and America's growth. Like when we first occupied these colonies over here and westward expansion was called manifest destiny. Okay, now watch. This... This is the, the uh, definition. A policy of imperialistic expansion defended as necessary or benevolent. Two, the 19th century doctrine that the United States had the right and duty to expand throughout the North American continent. Three, the political doctrine or belief held by the United States of America, particularly during its expansion, that the nation was destined to expand toward the West. Is that correct? Is that correct? Some of you... Some of you Thought, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's a lie. Say it. It says at the top, defend it necessary, what would happen if it was necessary. It was. First of all, it's not imperialistic. Why? Why did the majority of Europeans come to America and start pushing westward? Spread the word. Spread the word. Spread the, word the gospel. They died sharing the gospel. That's what they were doing. Sure, there was religious freedom. They were getting away from, you know, persecution over in, in the Netherlands and things like that, Denmark and things like that. But they were also going because big step of faith. There's going to be a lot of freedom, a lot of hard work right here, a lot of opposition, but we're going to go because we feel God is calling us to go share the light with the lost and the dying world. That's what's happening. Now, look, this is the political doctrine of belief. Where, where's God in any of this? They, they, it should manifest destiny. The calling of God on their lives to establish America as, as a city on a hill. That's what I told you. History plus the Word of God. And, and now you're talking. If you're going to talk about American history, you need to know the Word of God. All right, I'll, I'll prove that in a second. Look. So it's not a political doctrine. It's not a belief. It's, it, it, it was God's will that we set this nation up for the glory of God. Making sense? We good? Gomez? 
What do you mean you're lost? So you mean that this is right? Like, is this is all wrong. This is a wrong definition. This is, this is a liberal, Democrat, progressive definition. Basically, these are people who, who define this and use this definition. These are people who hate America, and they think America needs to be ashamed of themselves. That's what, that's, that's how, that's what this is, shame on America for forcing your beliefs on, on these beautiful Indian people. All oh, them Indians were savages. Do you, do you guys know? What's the one thing in, Indians had never had before? There was an invention. And until they saw Europeans come in with this thing, they, huh? It wasn't rifles. It was simpler than that. Soap. Say it. Soap. No. Candle. Say it. Candle. Nope. Uh, what would you say? Outhouses. Outhouses? No. You know what it was? The wheel. <laughs> Indians didn't know what a wheel was. And then they saw that thing, you're like, oh, huh, look at that. How long have we had the wheel? <laughs> they didn't even know what a wheel was. <laughs> Some of you guys are like, y'all ain't heard nothing yet, man. So here it is. Manifest destiny, uncover what's been hidden. Look, um, everybody go to Romans 8, 19. Just so you know, get a Bible. This is the picture they use for manifest destiny. If you've ever seen this picture, it's manifest destiny. It means, thank you, Artie. Um, th this is the Spirit of God moving across the West and pushing the Indians out, and the settlers are coming behind them. And they, some people hate this picture. Democrats and liberals and progressives and idiots hate this picture. Because you're just torturing black folks and people of color. None of that is true. These people are doing the will of God. All right, Romans 8, 19. Look left and right. Make sure somebody's there. He's, he's reading in the back. Everybody there? Help, help. Look left and right. Muchacho, you got it? Help him out, Chidi. Sandy, one more time. You sneeze again. I swear, I swear, I swear, I swear. Okay, Romans 8, 19, nice and loud. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Okay, give me King Jimmy. Who's got King Jimmy? No one has King Jimmy translation? I mean, I mean that's a good translation still, but you got it? Now, now pay attention because I'm going to show you something here in just a second. Go. For the earnest... It's a difficult read, it's King James, but it says the earnest expectation of the creature, all of creation, is waiting. Everybody look at me. I don't want you guys lost in the pay. I'm, I'm, I'm dropping knowledge on you. I want you to learn so you go out here at least provoked in thought. I'm going to provoke your thinking. It says, Romans 8, 19 says that all of creation is waiting in earnest expectation, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Manifestation. I've talked to some of you guys about this before. What does manifest in the Greek mean? Manifest in the Greek. There's, there's, a, there's an identical word, but it's not manifest. What is it? Not, not the Greek word yet. What's the last book of the Bible? Revelation. Revelation. Exact same word in the Greek. Revelation, manifest. Same word. What's the Greek word now? Compound word. It's apo, apo, and calypto. Apo and Calypto. Apo, apocalypto. We get the word apocalypse from that. Apocalypse. Well, it's an apocalypse. You break that thing, apo, that first word, it means to uncover something. It means it's like a blanket is on something. So you're literally, it describes taking the blanket off of something. So it means there's an uncovering. Yes? Calypto. What does that sound like? Calypto, klepto, calypto, calypto. Huh? Kleptomaniac. What's a kleptomaniac? Mustache. Like somebody, like, say it again. Say it again. Steals. No. It's not someone who steals. That's a thief. It's, say it. It literally, klepto, technically, is someone who hides things. They're, not, they're, they're, they're stealing, but they're, they're hiding things. They're hiding things. So, 
Apocalypto means to uncover something that was, that was hidden. Uncover something that was hidden. And so basically the, the, all creation, even America before we got there, was waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, the revealing of the record, the revealing of what they need a savior. What's the record? What's the record? The revealing of history. What, what's the record? The gospel. Look, it's the gospel. Yes. Everyone, everyone's sin is man. Jesus came and died for our sins, son of God, virgin born, crucified, buried for three days, resurrected, ascended, say he's coming back. Salvation in no other name except Jesus. That's the record, and the world needs to know it, yeah? That, that's, what that, that's what this is talking about. The revealing of the sons of God, the manifesting of the sons of God. The, the, this is, the world is in pain waiting for you to show up. Why is the world waiting for a Christian to show up? Because you're supposed to know the record and the history of a fallen mankind. And the solution is Jesus Christ. That's why the world is waiting for you to show up. The world is waiting for you to manifest. Turn to somebody, tell them, manifest. manifest. Turn to somebody else. Turn, tell somebody else, manifest. Hey, there you go. I, don't know, I have no idea what you just said. I don't know what he said. He said, he said it in Spanish. So uncover what's been hidden. So Psalm 24, 1, that basically means the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, of all of its inhabitants. What does that mean? Everything in the earth belongs to God. It says it right there. Everything in the earth, to include all the people, they all belong to God. Muslims belong to God. Chinese belong to God. Beaners belong to God. <laughs> what about midgets? What about hobbits? Belong to God. They all belong to God. Now, watch this. Mark 16, 15 says what? This right here is your, your commission right there. It, that, that's called the Great Commission. Mark 16, 15 says, Go into you, you, Christian, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And here's the gospel in a nutshell. Wait, when it says, go into all the world, what does all mean? Everywhere. Gomez, what does all mean? Everything. It says, go into all the world. Does that include your barracks? Yes. Does that include your, your, your city capital? The, the, the president's uh, uh, office. Yes. It, it's everywhere. Okay, yeah, so, okay, so it says, and preach the gospel. Here's the gospel in a nutshell, all right? Everybody, I want you guys to repeat after me. You're going to learn the gospel. This is the gospel. Your primary conversation with people is the gospel. And most Christians don't know the gospel, so I really simplified it. I'm telling you right now, most Christians don't know the gospel. If I asked some of you new guys, give me the gospel, you wouldn't get it. But we're told, everyone tells you, preach the gospel. Well, what is it? And you're not taught. Well, you're going to learn right now. So I'm going to use, you got a candidate right here. You have to share these four points with him. And use your fingers, all right? And so repeat after me. You tell your candidate, number one, there is a God and he loves you, but your sins. Repeat. There is a God and he loves you, but your sins. Number two, everyone's sins, sins separate you from God. All sins have to be paid for Who's going to pay for yours? Number two, everyone sins, sin separates you from God. All sins have to be paid for. Who's going to pay for yours? All right, so if you're not doing this, mirroring this, I'm going to, I'm going to stone you. Give, give me some bricks. Under Mosaic law, we can stone you. All right, what's number one? There is a God and he loves you, but your sins. Everyone needs to know this. There is a God. He does love you. But we need to talk about your sins, yeah? What's number two? Everyone's sins. Sins separate you from God. All sins have to be paid for. Who's going to pay for yours? Number three. Jesus Christ is the only way to God. God, mankind, Jesus, bridge. Number three. Jesus Christ is the only way to God. God, mankind, Jesus, bridge. And so what's number one? There is God, and he loves you, but your sins. Number two, everyone sins. Sin separates you from God. All sins have to be paid for. Who's going to pay for yours? Number three, Jesus Christ is the only way to God. God, mankind, Jesus, bridge. And number four, you have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. Watch. Crucified, 
buried, resurrected on the third day, ascended into heaven, and he's coming back. So number four, you have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. Crucified, buried, resurrected on the third day, ascended into heaven, and he's coming back. That's the gospel in a nutshell. You can, you can share them, them points in like 10 seconds. That's your primary conversation, all right? So that's what it says. The earth belongs to, everything in the earth belongs to God to include all mankind. Go forth and preach the gospel to all people. And that means, he says, you're going, you will be my witnesses throughout the entire earth. That word witness in the Greek means martyr. He says, if you're a Christian, you're my martyr. What's a martyr? It's someone who dies for the truth. Now watch, I gotta say this. Is, is, that, is that person who straps a satchel of explosives to him, la, 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 I like more, boom. Is he a martyr? No, 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 he didn't die for the truth. He is not a martyr, but we call him a martyr incorrectly. That's not a martyr. A martyr technically is someone who died for the truth. So when, a, when if a Muslim takes a satchel a bag of explosives jumps on somebody. He's not dying for the truth. Matter of fact, that's, that's nowhere in the Bible. I mean, have you ever seen a Christian explosives and just run in a crowd of people? Jesus loves you. Boom. Who th doesn't even make sense. You see how, how, how devilish this is? It's, it's foolishness. And yet we say, all over the news, whenever there's another suicide bombing, they say, yo, he, uh, he, he, uh, another martyr. And, he, and here's another thing. He said, he said, Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar means God is great. Is that true? Does Allah Akbar mean God is great? What does it mean? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You're going to think this through. I have, I have Christian friends in the Middle East. And they, when they pray, they're Christians, spirit-filled. And when they pray, they pray, they use the name Allah for God. So don't, don't let me lose you here. When they say Muslims, Allah Akbar means God is great. Is that true? I mean. No. What they're literally saying is the God of Muslims is great. And you know where the proof is? Ask any Muslim. I was in a cab in New York um, some time ago, man. It got heated. And uh, <laughs> the, the, the cab driver was Muslim. And I said, well, we don't serve the same God. I had a master sergeant tell me the same thing. We serve the same God. I said, it's not the same God. He said, oh, yeah, you call him Allah. We call him Allah. You call him Yahweh. You call him all kinds of stuff, but it's the same God. I said, one question for you. Does your God, who you call Allah, have a son named Jesus? Nope. Not the same God. You guys okay with that? That wasn't in the notes. So you're going to be my martyr. Martyr doesn't mean you put on explosives and go kill people as a Christian. It means you die to your flesh. You die to self. And you go do faith stuff and love stuff to people. And then well, I just read that. So again, before you criticize America, you need two things. You need, you need um, uh, the Word of God and you need actual American history. If you just have the Word of God without, I mean, uh, American history without the Bible, you can say anything. But it, 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 the actual American history is, is, is threaded with the Word of God. This is why our foundations are Judeo-Christian. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. And then, um, did God establish America? Yes. Oh, absolutely, He did. And see, so if, if God established America and God stood America up, if you're going to be a critic, you better be careful about criticizing something God is doing. And what do people say about America today? America, uh, hate America, it needs to be knocked down, not, not exceptional, not, you know, full of racists, white slave owners, tear down the statues, you know, stole the land, all this, these, these lies, exploited the people. They're all lies. These people are ignorant, yet what's, wor what's, worth is, what's worse is ignorant Christians who let them get away with this. What's, what's called, what is the great experiment? Have you heard that term before? What, is it, what do you think it is? What is it? What do you think it is, Jack? When America was founded, all the other nations took a step back and said, hmm, let's see what happens. Because it had never been done before. 
What had not been done before? What's the great experiment mean? What, what, what's, what's unique about our formation other than any other nation in, throughout the history of the world? Huh? No. But, but no. Man, you guys suck, man. You guys suck. You know what the great experiment was? And I'm fast forwarding to this. It's basically the concept that a nation can govern themselves with God. It had never been done before. That's what our, our, our Constitution and Bill of Rights is all about. The Declaration of Independence. It's, can, can, you said the Republic. We are a Republic. But can we govern ourselves without a king and an emperor or a tyrant? Can we govern ourselves with the political system and voting and all this other stuff? Can we govern ourselves with God? And we're failing that right now. We're absolutely failing that right now. Man. So what makes America unique? Well, I just gave you something right there. Um, the great experiment and all that. What makes America special? When, when, let me see. Ah, it's right there. Self-government. We govern ourselves. What is wealth creation? No other nation did this. You're not stuck in the class you're born. Explain. What, what he's saying, you're exactly right. What he's saying is, prior to the birth of America, how can, let's say, he's a landlord and he's a peasant. How can he get rich? There's only one way he can get rich. No, he, wasn't he ain't going to marry because this is royalty. This is trash. Say it. He had to steal and conquer him. He had all the marbles. And the only way for him to get marbles is to take his marbles. That makes sense. Well, where wealth creation comes in at, and they figured this out real quick. <laughs> at the beginning, when the colonies were being started, and uh, they were they were trying to keep the classes, what they find out real quick, they had like 200, and I want to say it was like 225 people, and then uh, they ended up that first year they ended up only having like 25 or 30 people left. What they find out is that they're not going to work because they, they said, if, if, if you guys work and they're, they're, you're producing food, I'm a gentleman, I don't have to work, so I just sit down, you know, and you guys, it sounds like welfare is what it was, but you guys work, I don't have to work because I'm a gentleman. I'm, I'm elite, I'm upper class, so work. And what happened, more people stopped working. I'll get to that in a second. More people stopped working, less food, they died. William Bradford figured out, no, we need to, <laughs> let's set up a system of capitalism. He says, you get to keep what you make. And, and within like three months, nine months, they began to turn things over and they were making money, they were making wheat, they, and everyone was trading and we began to grow and thrive and prosper. Wealth creation, what that means is that if you in America work, you can get rich on your own. You can create your own wealth. You don't have to take his marbles. You can get your own marbles. That's what America's about right there. What's the problem with this, though? Most people don't want to work, particularly today. Most people hate work. When work is good for you, work is good for me. You have to work. It's only through work that you will appreciate what you reap. If you just get handouts all the time, you'll never appreciate it. I tell you guys this all the time. If I had millions and millions of dollars and I gave each one of you a million dollars, you would take the million dollars. Right? But, but you would never appreciate it to the degree that I appreciate it because you don't know what it's worth. You don't know the sweat and the toil that it took to generate that kind of money. Right? You'll take it, but you'll never appreciate it the way I do. Yes? I'm really flying through this. Makes sense, mustache? Oh, what's your name? I keep calling you mustache. Just say, hey, I met you. Yeah, where you been? I like you. Giuseppe. <laughs> this guy. All right. And exceptionalism. What's exceptional about America? The left hates that word. America is exceptional. What does that mean? We're different. We're better than everybody else. Yeah, I said it. I said it. People on YouTube, you know, they, they, they write me. <laughs> yeah, we're exceptional. We're better than everybody else. 
I'm not saying that with an inordinate sense of pride, but America is better than everybody else. Why? Where's the proof that we're exceptional? Hmm? Maybe God, freedom. Look, uh, I'll get to the freedom thing in a minute. Um, <laughs> do you know, because of the freedom that was, that was given to us, you were free to do and thrive whatever your dreams were for your life, your ambitions, your goals. You could do it. What that did, that opened up this entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit and capitalistic uh, spirit, and people began to... The, the, the assembly line. Who created the assembly line for, for the automobile? Henry Ford. Henry Ford. That's an American invention, the assembly line. Who created the light bulb? Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison. Who created... You know the internet was created in America in 1960s? Huh? What about um, air conditioning? That's an American invention. Air conditioning. Dude, there, there's so many things that we've done in America because we were free to do. Who invented the airplane? The Wright brothers. The Wright brothers. And how, how the, how's that possible? You can't do that in a third world country. Why? If one, you're not allowed to. You don't have the resources. You darn sure don't have the money to experiment. But in America, man, you just bust your tail and work. You can thrive at anything you put your mind to. Ah, man. That's why we're exceptional. Um, hard work. But here's the thing. Independence. We talk about Independence Day. And, and we know independence. We got our independence from. We, we, we wrote Great Britain off and we, we broke up with them. And so what happens if you, if you start doing hard work and you actually gain your independence? What do you discover about yourself? That's, that's half of it, but what do you really discover? You, what you find out, what you discover, if you work hard and you do it yourself, what you find out, you find out, I don't need you to help me. I'm independent. I don't need you, government. Now, why is this a threat to government? Government needs you to depend upon them. You ever seen the picture of the wild pigs getting caught? You ever seen them cages, the big old round metal cages that drop on all them pigs? You know them wild pigs? They're, they're ornery. They're, they're beasts, man. And they, 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 they're, they're thick skinned. They're, they can hurt you. And they tear up crops, right? And um, there's a story, and I've seen videos of this, but there's a story of a farmer who has a problem with wild pigs. And he tells, uh, the hunter says, yeah, I can get rid of your pigs. He said, it'll take me a couple days, but you know, give, me, give me a couple days, I can figure this out. And so he said, how are you going to do it? What he did, the hunter, he put corn right out in the middle of the field. Right out in the middle of the field. And what ends up happening, the, the hogs come out there, wild hogs, they look at it, and they're looking all around, suspicious, eat the corn, run back into the woods. Next day, same thing, lunchtime. And so pretty soon it becomes the feeding place, yes? And the hogs just come, and they, they eat, and they take off. And then what the hunter does, he puts the corn out there, but he puts the post right there. And the wild hogs come and they check out the post, like sniff it up a little bit and eat the corn, take off. And then they come out there, there's another post and another post. And then there's a rail and there's another rail, another rail. Pretty soon it's a corral and the pigs are coming in and out of this corral. And then he starts developing a door. And then they all come inside that thing and eat. And now he just, boom, close the door. This is welfare. You ever seen that thing, do not feed the bears? Why, why, why are we not supposed to feed the bears? Because they become dependent on human handouts. And it's dangerous for us, too. They're supposed to be, keep them wild. Well, this is, this is us. If you, if you become dependent on government, they can control you. This is why they, they, they want you dependent upon them. And a lot of you, I promise you, this is going to, it is what it is. A lot of you were bullied into the vax. You didn't have to take the vax. I'm just going to be honest with you. You did not have to take the vax. And just about every one of you were bullied into taking it. You compromised. I know probably four or five people who got out said, nope, not going to do it. And they just got out. And now look, now, now look at all the, the stuff that's coming out about the vax and all this other crap. It's true. I'm, I love you guys. But I, I don't think if I was actually doing that, no, no, I'm not going to do it. You know, the only way I was going to do it my daughter was working for Athey's 
And she didn't want the vax, but they were making her. They said, if, you know, you're going to get tested every week. If you don't get the vax, you need to get the vax. You need to get vax. And so I said, if they make you get the vax, I'll get the vax with you because she was afraid of it. But things started cooling off and then the scare went away because it was a farce. The whole thing was a farce. Good. Say again. Oh yeah, of course. The mark of the beast and things like this. It's, it's kind of like, without getting too deep into this, a lot of Americans, <laughs> when, when you saw, mm, when you saw people's response out there about, he ain't got his mask on, report him. He didn't have a mask and they reported it on their neighbors. There's, there's, there's social distancing and you're not supposed to have gatherings of what is it, six or more or something like that? Something like that. And the neighbors were important. So uh, what I tell my friends now, like if, if, if you ever wondered, would you comply with Nazi rules and stuff? Now we know. And a whole lot of Americans complied. Military, non-military, Christian, non-Christian, they complied. What does that tell you about their character? Weak. Weak. It's scary to me. I promise you, it's scary to me. Uh, I'll get to it. Check this out. We have a U.S. Constitution, and we also have this thing called tolerance. The difference is rights and beliefs. Just so you know, the, the difference between U.S. Constitution and tolerance is under the U.S. Constitution, you have the right to believe whatever you want to believe under the U.S. Constitution. If you want to believe in Mickey Mouse as the savior, go for it. You want to believe in Donald Duck, go for it. You have that right to believe whatever you want to believe. The flip side is under tolerance, tolerance says all beliefs are right. What's the difference? What's the difference? Am I losing you guys? That's exactly right. And they're forcing tolerance on you guys. They're forcing tolerance on you. You're supposed to be tolerant. No, you're not. They've changed, the, they've changed the definition of tolerance. Tolerant was, back in my days, and it was wrong, there was a bunch of people who actually beat up homosexuals and stuff like that. You shouldn't do that. that that's stupid. But tolerance was, I don't agree with your lifestyle. Just, just, you do you. And that, that's what's supposed to happen. You do you. I don't agree with it. Now tolerance demands that you accept their lifestyle. And many of you are I already know many of you are too, Christians are too afraid to speak up and say, tell them what you really believe. I've had chaplains try to shut me down. I've had EO complaints try to shut me down. Saying, you can't say that. You know, if you're going to preach against homosexuality, you also need to have a homosexual affirmation. No. Not going to do it. Sue me. Yeah, it's just not, take it up with God. I'm just telling you what God said. Take it up with him. Get angry at him. Don't get angry at me. I'm just a messenger. Um, old school, religion 101 course objectives. Back in my day, it was the, the course syllabus stated the objective of this course, we're talking about religion 101, is to study and appreciate the truth claims of these various religions. Right? Back old school. To study and appreciate, I mean, uh, uh, study and evaluate evaluate the truth claims of all these religions. Today, it's to study and appreciate the truth claims of all these religions. One was evaluate, old school. Today, it's appreciate. What's the difference? Yeah, because what does it mean to evaluate? The root word is value. What does value mean? Give it worth. And you're saying, okay, I've studied five religions, and that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, that's five. That one was pretty, had a lot of merit. That one's just hokey. Well, you can't do that anymore today because feelings are now involved. Because if you told him he's number five, you just hurt his feelings. This is why we don't keep scoring Little League games and things like this, because you can't hurt feelings. This is tolerance. And so they said, uh, all beliefs are equal. Bam. We're all equal now. So appreciate my beliefs. And it's being forced on us. Makes sense. Man, if you knew the word of God, you wouldn't, you wouldn't let this happen. Define freedom. Let me see. Gomez, define freedom. I was free to come here. 
Define freedom, though. Individual okay. choice or will. Individual choice of will. No. The ability to live your life how you want as long as you are not stopping somehow. Wait, wait. This is good. This is good. Say it nice and loud. The ability to live your life how you want to as long as you're not stopping someone else from living their life how they want to. No. <laughs> close. Not even close. Damn. That was the definition of flesh. Most people, I got to speed this up. Most people would define, we're not doing fixed bayonets tonight. We don't have time. But most people would define freedom as the ability to do what I want whenever I want to do it. Right? That's kind of what you just said. What I want whenever I want to do it. That's flesh. What is freedom? You know it. No. Say it. The ability not to choose. Here's the, here's the definition. It's the ability to do the right thing. That's freedom. Freedom is not the ability to do what I want whenever I want to do it. I want to rape, pillage, and plunder. I want to run people off the road sometimes. I'm being for real, for real. <laughs> Can't do it. If I did that, I would lose my freedom. I'm going to jail. But proper Freedom definition is the ability to do the right thing. And who's the only one qualified to tell you what's right? God. God. That's it. That's, that's, turn to somebody tell them it's the ability to do the right thing. Tell somebody else. That's what freedom is. All right, let me, I'm speeding this up. Big government, we don't like big government. Look, here, let me give you this right here. In 1930, I looked at uh, BLS, Bureau of Labor and Statistics, Tons of information, a lot of it I don't know, but I know this is true. In 1930, one out of every 205 people worked for the government. Only one out of 205 people. That's a small government, right? 1995, one out of every five people worked for the government. That's 20%. Today, one dependent and one government bureaucrat for every two producing people. What's that mean? That means half the population work and pay taxes to support the other half. Do you understand something? I mean, this might chap your hide because you're, you're government employees. This might chap your hide. But you're not just government employees. This is a little bit different. So don't take this personal. You're military. So you actually provide a service. You protect our nation. And it's, it's necessary. The Constitution talks about this to provide for the common defense. Yeah? So I, I, I don't have a problem with that. But just know this, you're being paid by tax dollars. Yeah? So you don't pay taxes. You think you pay taxes, you really don't. How can you pay taxes on somebody, they gave you money, they're paying you from taxes, and you just give them some tax money back. That's all you're doing. I know, I did 22 years of it. But it's true, like, like when police officers you know, a lot of LEOs, man, they're, they're so lost. A lot of them are lost. We need, I'm pro-police, but I'm pro-competent police. There's a lot of police that are just incompetent. It, and it, it, it's, it's just a reflection of our declining morals and godlessness. And we've got a lot of police out there who are abusing their authority and their power. I get it. It's, it, it, it's everywhere. Corruption. It's everywhere. And these police, they say, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a public citizen. No, you're not. You're not a public, you're, you're, you work for the government. And he said, well, I pay taxes. You don't pay taxes. You don't. You're, 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 you, you get paid with taxes. So how are you going to pay, pay taxes on taxes that you're getting? You don't. Anyway, this right here, what's a bureaucrat? Anybody know what a bureaucrat is? It's a compound word. What's a bureau? No. It's a piece of furniture. It's a desk. So what's a bureaucrat? It's someone who rules from a desk. And a lot of these bureaucrats, they have no idea. I'm telling you, they have no idea what it means to be going to the field like you guys and train and get up at 5 or whatever, PT and stuff like that. But these people are making decisions on your behalf, and all they know is they're behind a desk making decisions over your welfare. Huh? What, does that make sense? Yeah. Bureaucrats, bad. I'm telling you right now, bureaucrats, bad. There was a time in the 1920s they would shoot bureaucrats that came on their property. 
You think I'm kidding? You think I'm kidding? The IRS would come, they'd get on my property. They'd, they'd just start throwing lead at them, and they, they left. Dude, we're, we're so far removed from that. Dude, it was something to own land because get off my land. Oh, man, there's so much to this. Check this out. I'm going to fly through this, but there's a lot of information on this thing. Principles of God versus government. God versus government. Number one, rights come from God, not government. Government doesn't have rights to give. So if government says, I'm giving you these rights, I'm giving you libo. You're a little different because you guys, you guys signed a dotted line. You're enlisted, so you've got to com comply. But free citizens, rights don't come. Yeah. I'm going to give you a right to drive. I don't need a right to drive, but we complied, and now everyone has to get a driver's license. You have, to, you have to get married by the state. That was never a thing. You were supposed to get married by the church. And now your marriage is bound to the state. And they can take your kids now. This is, this is, this is big government house taking over. Fishing licenses. When did that happen? Collecting water. You need permission to collect water. Taxes. You can't even build a tree house in your yard anymore. You can't even cut down a tree. You need permission. What happened? Christian men lost their balls. Let me make it real simple. We just, we just, we complied. We didn't do anything about it. If rights come from God, then God is God. If rights come from government, then government is God. You guys need to take a picture of this when it's done because this, this is some heavy stuff right here. Government cannot give you anything it first doesn't take from you or someone else. We're going to give you money. You took that from someone else. We're going to pay for your education. You took that from somebody else. Government doesn't produce anything. Government consumes. What's the purpose of the government? Service. 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 Go ahead. To protect your rights. That's, yeah, to protect your rights. Read the Constitution. It's a, you can, it's a one page document. Read it, and then all these Bill of Rights and Amendments in there. Read it. They're free. You can go online and get them for free. I used to have a bunch of them. I'd give them to you guys, but you guys probably use them to pick your teeth. Government will take every inch of ground you give it. Sort of like, we should have term limits. You didn't think that through. Government will grow in direct proportion to the character of the people. Do you know what the problem with America right now is? There's only... 100 senators and I think 534 congressmen. Is it 434? Are you sure? No, I think it's 500. No, it, 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 let's just say 500. I'm pretty sure it's over 500, but let's just say it's 500. Listen, you got 100 senators. Hang on, guys. Hang on. We got to move. You got 100 senators. Let's say you have 500 congressmen. That's 600 people. 600 people. Only 600 people. What's the real problem with America? It's not them 600 people. Why are they getting away with the crap that they're doing? Because their supporters and voters doing nothing about it. The, my, my, see, my, my issue isn't with the crappy politicians. My issue is with their... Who voted for that clown? It's Americans. Americans, they're godless, they're lost, they're confused. And the only solution is for you to manifest and push back. That's the godly solution. The greater the character of the people, the greater the freedom of the people. It's so simple. If, if, it's kind of like this. You guys know anybody, a Marine, who got into trouble and his, security, his uh, libo was secured? Yes. <laughs> I was a libo risk. <laughs> I got, they would tell me all the time, Gary, you're a libo risk. You're a great Marine, you know your MOS, you're a good job, you're a Navy Chief of Metal, all the stuff that I earned. Uh, it wasn't a quota, uh, but I was a liberal risk. I was telling somebody, I got four DUIs. Who did I tell that just a minute? 40, 84, 85, 86, and 87. I came in in 80, and I got, in 81, I got my first uh, NJP. It was battalion level NJP. Then I got company level NJP, and then I got... Uh, summary court martial, then I got my DUI, another DUI, two more DUIs, and then I got a felony, and uh, dude, and, and every time I got in trouble, every time I got in trouble, my liberty was secured. 
because I, I demonstrated piss poor character. And because I had bad character, your freedom is secured. The greater the character, the greater your freedom. The lesser character, the limited freedom you have. Yes? Flying through this. Lesser character, the lesser freedom. Type of government that people have is a reflection of the character of those people. What's going on right now in America is a reflection of Americans. All this confusion. You, did you see the debate the other day? That's, that's a reflection of the people. We, we, the voters, have let them get away with that stupid stuff. Biden and Democrats. Democrats are a cancer. Republicans are spineless. But Democrats, they're, they're wicked. They're godless. Just do some research about Democrats. There's nothing godly about uh, Demo the Democratic Party. Nothing. They actually booed God at their national convention, I don't know, 10, 10 years ago. The, 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 they were coming out, and they're, they're, they're voting for the delegates, and, and the, the, the chairperson came out, and they addressed all the delegates and said, oh, we made a mistake. We have to uh, include an addendum. We're going to take a vote now to add two things. One, we're going to add you to this. We're going to add... God to our charter, and we're going to recognize Israel. Let's vote. And the delegates are out there. He said, all in support of, of including God in our charter and the recognition of Israel as a state, say, I. And they went, I. Opposed? Nay. And he's like, I'm supposed to pass this. And so his buddy, he, he took the vote again. Same thing happened. The eyes were a little louder, but the nays were much louder. They didn't want God to be mentioned in their charter or the state of Israel. And so his boss came out and whispers in his ear, and, just, and you can, he's just telling him, take the vote and just pass the motion. So he said, okay, one more time. <laughs> vote for, let me hear the eyes if you support um, uh, putting God in our charter and recognize Israel. Aye! Those opposed. Nay! It was a nay again. And he says, it is, a, it is the motion of this, the opinion of this chair, and the motion of this chair that it passes with an eye. And they, boo, and they began to boo God. They literally booed God. What Christian could be a part of that? I wrestle with that. I, I have family. And most of my black friends are Democrats. I, I, but they, they say they're Christian. I, I wrestle with that. How's that even possible? Ah, you, you hang around, you hear more about that. People get the kind of government they deserve. Government fears people, you have freedom. When people fear government, you have tyranny. Right now, we're afraid of government. Everyone's afraid. There's a lot of people afraid. You don't speak your, you know, freedom of speech? Psh, no, 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 no. Commanders were afraid of being canceled. They know we had. I had a. I had an audience with the battalion commander. He's a colonel down there some time ago, and um, his XO came in, and the XO tried to corner me. I had an issue with the brig, and all kind of drama was going on, so I had to report something. And the XO, lieutenant colonel, said, uh, "Well, my mother-in-law. No, he said my mom is a is a, is a lesbian. I and I." I embrace her and her doctrine and her philosophy just as much. So what's, what's the, I said, just some question. Did God say it's okay to be a lesbian? And it was, and they both called themselves Christians. And it was checkmate. I know how to checkmate people because I know the word of God. And uh, I, had, I had another guy who's, he, he's a lieutenant colonel. And when he got, when, when support came for LGBTQ, all this other stuff, he, this colonel in charge of a battalion came out as a cross-dresser and transvestite. And so now he says he's a woman trapped in a man's body and he's commanding troops. That's so sad. This, <laughs> what, see, yeah, we all shake our heads, but where, where are the Christian leaders, the staff NCOs and senior staff NCOs and officers? Where are they at? Saying that's wrong. Where are they at? They, they, I, I didn't understand this. I understand it now. You know most generals are Democrats? How do you get to be a, a Democrat? How do you get to be, Why do you have to be a Democrat to be a general? You have to comply. 
you cannot buck against the system or you're not going to get selected. Same stuff right there. And so now we have tyranny because people are silent. Um, dependence on government increases or dependency on God decreases. Working hard and discovering our, your independence threatens government because why? Th government doesn't like you working hard because they, they realize if you work hard, you're going to discover, I don't need government. I can do this on my own. I don't need a handout. I can do this on my own. Here's one more. Here's your million dollar question. Are we going to depend on government or God? God. We're supposed to, but do we really? Do we really? And you're only going to have to stand up at this one time. So as I close this up, I'm going to give you some questions for your friends about, because Independence Day is coming up. And there's all these accusations about America. You got it? There's all these accusations about America. America, uh, uh, Europeans exploited the masses. Uh, genocide. Uh, the blankets and smallpox, which is a flat-out lie. That's an urban legend. There's no truth. Some of you heard that, though, and believed it and probably perpetrated the lie. Uh, it was built on the backs of slaves. And then and, and the Indians, we massacred the Indians, blah, blah, blah. That's all, they're all lies. Here, here's the question for you. First of all, this guy, Horace Greeley, it is impossible to enslave mentally or socially a Bible-reading people. The principles of the Bible are the groundwork of human freedom. So true. And then George Washington said, it is impossible to rightly govern a nation without God in the Bible. Now check this out. Here's your question. Take a picture of this when I'm done because you're going to need these. Who does the earth belong to? God. God. Scripture says it belongs to the whole earth and all the inhabitants. And does, if it all belongs to God, does Mark 16, 15 go into all the world and preach the gospel? Did it include America? Yes. It did. So that's why they were coming over and they landed here and a westward expansion was because they were on a mission from God. Most of them. I'll explain. Watch. Hang on. Did God, have a, did God have a hand in and a purpose for the formation of America? You better believe it. I'm, I, I believe with all my heart that God stood America up. And God used godly men. And these, Here's a simple question. In general, men today, men today, generally speaking, in 2024, are we closer to God men, are we closer to God today than the men were back in 1700s? No. Who was closer? Them or us? No. Without a doubt, they were. Without a doubt. Leagues closer to God. Because they, you know, they would memorize entire books of the Bible at four and five years old. Guys, look up wall builders. Go to Amazon, look up wall builders. YouTube wall builders and Freedom Foundation. You'll see all kind of American history. Look up David Barton. He's a premier American historian. He's a, he's a Christian, God-fearing Christian, and he lays it out. It's excellent. Yes, God had a hand in and a purpose for the formation of America. Was Christopher Columbus a Christian? We just read that. He was on a mission from the Lord. So when people criticize Christopher Columbus, you should ask him. You know, he was on a mission from the Lord. What are you doing for the Lord? And see, what people do, this is when they criticize Christopher Columbus, you know what that's called? That's, that's called casting stones. And what does the Bible say about casting stones? He was, he was without sin, cast the first stone. And so that's the epitome of casting stones. When they tear down his statues, a bunch of morons, they're tearing down statues of our founding fathers and our history. And that, that's the epitome of casting stones. Basically, you're digging in someone's, in, in, into someone's history and finding what you think is dirt. He owned slaves. And so you're, you're passing judgment, you're casting stones. When how, let me ask you, let me just put this on you for a second. It, whatever rank you are, however long you've been, how would you like someone to investigate you thoroughly and find dirt, sin, mistakes, and then remove any ranks or awards that you've received up to this point? Who's, who's, who's in favor of that? Who's, who's, who's guiltless in here? Raise your hand if you're guiltless and you've got nothing, nothing in your closet. Yet we let these other liberals and clowns get away with you know, these cupcakes get away with destroying our history. And, and we're not speaking up when you all should speak up. Making sense? I, okay. Did the Indians need salvation? Yes, yes. Of course they did, man. They were barbaric. Many Indian tribes, they had human sacrifice. They had cannibalism. Is this acceptable? Is this a proud heritage? No, we, they don't talk about that. Why don't you bring that up? If whites stole the land, who'd the Indians get the land from? They stole it from somebody else. They stole it from somebody else. They stole it from somebody else. Well, how did it end? Finally, conquest. 
If the Indians want it back, take over. Riot. Rebel. Let me know how that works out for you. It's already established. It's probably not going to happen. Uh, throughout history, how was every nation formed? It was formed through conquest. Here's a big one. Which one people group fundamentally built America? What did you say? He said white people. No. What? He, Americans. No. Mexicans. No. Christians. Overwhelmingly, Christians built America. One white or black. It was Christians. I don't care what color you were. Christians stood America up. God-fearing men and women. Check this out. Which one people group overwhelmingly lived and died to end slavery? Christians. Nope. White people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mean that. White people. And so when these people say, all oh, these white slave owners, well, add to your little mix of stupidity, it was white people who died. You know how many people died during the Civil War? Somebody said it. Somebody was close. Who said it? it that's, that's modest. He says 600,000. They say it's, it's about 750,000. And some people believe it was higher than that, it was like 850,000. That's almost a million people died in the Civil War. And they were predominantly white. Over what? Probably, probably 90% white. So these same white people that you hate bled and died so you could be free. Negro? That stuff pisses me off because, look, one, this is what happened. Years ago, I was at a black church, and I was preaching at this black church, and it came up, and, and the, the question came up. Don't answer this question right now because uh, I'll, I'll answer it for you. Does white privilege exist? And, and if you're white in here and you believe white privilege exists, you're wrong because you have to show me in the Bible where it says, for God so loved white people that he gave his only begotten son. White people are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's not in the Bible. Mankind is fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes? So white privilege does not exist. And it's bad that white people believe that, but what's worse is black people who believe it. And so it was, it was during um, this month. Uh, what's it called this month? Pride. Ob Obama. No, no. It's LGBT Appreciation Pride. Month, right? Pride. Pride. Pride Month. Thank you. Yeah, I couldn't hear you. But you know who started Pride Month? Democrats. Obama did. One of his first presidential acts. He, was in, he got inaugurated in, in January of, uh, I want to say, 2009. The election was in November 2008. One of his first acts was to institute by presidential proclamation that June is henceforth and forevermore now recognizes LGBT Pride Month. Yeah? Well, I asked these black folks because what, what, what had happened during Pride Month, in order to support Pride Month and say it's okay to be gay and all this other stuff, they would use, who, who's seen the movie Roots? The, the series Roots. It's about slavery. Came out in the 70s. It's, it's, it's really wicked. It's kind of wrong. But they, they, they would play Roots about slavery in support of Pride Month. And I asked this black church, I said, um, what they're saying is discrimination against homosexuals is identical to discrimination against blacks. It's the same thing. And I said, what's wrong with it, black folks? What's wrong with that? And they couldn't, they, they, they didn't know what to say. They're like, yeah, I guess that's right. They got a case. No, they don't. The difference is it's not a sin to be black. It's a sin to be homosexual. It's not a sin to be black. But it went right over their heads. Uh, so let, me, let me wrap this up. White people. Was slavery unique only to America? No. Nope. Of every, throughout history, there was slaves everywhere. Um, were blacks the only slaves in America? Nope. Did black own slave, blacks own slaves? Yep. Did Indians own slaves? Yep. You know the first guy? His name was Anthony Johnson, I believe it was. Anthony Johnson. First guy to go to the Supreme Court because he had a slave that got away. And so he actually went to the Virginia court, state court, Supreme, uh, Virginia Supreme Court, to, um, to, to, to legally own a slave. Anybody heard about this guy? Oh, did I mention that he was black? 
First guy to legally own a slave in America was a black man. Went to court over it. Look him up, Anthony Johnson. And then, um, yeah, blacks own slaves. And matter of fact, so much is written about black slave owners were worse than white slave owners. Black slave owners, they, they, they did a lot of inbreeding among their slaves, whereas whites didn't do that. Predominantly, they didn't do that. Ooh, they had all kind of drama with that. You guys need to re research William Bradford, George Whitfield, and Jonathan Edwards. William Bradford was on, um, with the Mayflower. He came over on the Mayflower. These guys came over uh, just before the 1776. And they, these guys were on fire preachers. Look them up. I told you about what was American exceptionalism. We're different. And it is true. And this is, I told you, we're the only nation that they confer Americanism on you. You cannot get that from any other nation on this earth. You can't. You can't go to France. You'll get some registration uh, paperwork, but you'll never be French. You'll never be Italian. You'll never be German. You won't. Only in America can you come from any of those nations and become an American. It's, man, it's a beautiful thing. And so are there any positives in the founding of America? Oh, there's a lot. We're not perfect. We got a lot of drama. But the, do the positives outweigh the negatives? Yeah. And here's the bottom line. Name any country built on the premise that God, that man would be free to govern himself with God. There, there isn't. This is, that's why America's unique. America was God-inspired. The Constitution is a, is a beautiful document. It's, it's, it's ingenious. I think it was God, Holy Ghost-inspired. You read the history about how America stood up. It almost didn't get stood up. It was so fragile. My goodness, it's amazing. Okay, so we're done. Um, that was a lot. We're not going to do fixed bayonets, but we usually do this. So if some of you new guys, this is role-playing drills. We're not doing this tonight. But role-playing, what we do, we get together and we role-play a bunch of arguments. We have Christians versus critics. And one time you get to be a critic and you get to blast that Christian. The Christian has to give biblical responses. And then we change and then he gets to be a critic and you get to be a Christian. It's role-playing. And here's some of the arguments. This is one-on-one -on -one stuff. You need scripture to respond to all of this stuff, all right? This, this, these exercises right here produce a lot of fruit in your lives, all right? If you need these slides, just text me. I'll send them to you, all right? No, no, take your time, Dennis. No, no. Take your time, buddy. No. Okay, here's 201 stuff. This is hot topic stuff. This will get you in trouble, but I don't care because this, these are fun to talk about. People get pissed about this kind of stuff because it's social, moral, it's philosophical. And, but the Bible talks about all this stuff, Black Lives Matter, Confederate flag, white privilege, truth, remove them statues, uh, gun control, police brutality, uh, what else? Anyway, yeah, homosexuality, same-sex marriage, blaze up, alcohol and drugs, yeah. 301 stuff, this is what goes on up here, we talk about this in here, we, we do fixed bayonets on this stuff too. And then, last one is internal doctrinal battles. We, oftentimes we don't get to these, because this is meat, and a lot of us are just on milk right now. Let's go ahead and stand up. This is when we do throwbacks. Throwbacks. What did you get tonight? Things that you're taking away. Everyone should have got something. Go, Chidi. Uh, the, the log note from Christopher Columbus, I thought that was really, like, huge. I don't think that, like, um, that his his, his like, whole goal was to come over and colonize. Yeah. Um, take over and kill people. Mm-mm. Like, he was on a mission from God. On a mission from God. What would you get tonight? This is your first time out. The Americans were actually all Christian people who had believed. A lot of, now, not all Americans, because some people, you know, there was a difference between South America. They've had this, 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 this discussion and research into this. How come America, North America thrived, but South America didn't? And they had these philosophers. I can give you some names, but they had these philosophers over the last 200 years who, who, who tried to search for the glory and genius of America. And what they found... And these guys were from France and Italy and Spain and England. They came over and they wanted, why is America so great? And what they found is that the people who went to South America were in search of gold. Where the people who went to uh, 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 North America were in search of God. Now, that doesn't mean everyone who came to our shores was a godly person. Because we got a lot of criminals. I promise you, we do have a lot of criminals. Right? But overwhelmingly... People feared God, and God's hand was on their lives, and, and he helped set this nation up. Um, who, who else? Go, go ahead. Uh, Indians, like, we sold the land from Indians, and we sold the land from other people. We just didn't 
say that with Indians. Yeah, same thing. That, I love that video clip. Um, what'd you, in the back, what did you guys get? Eli, did you get anything tonight besides, you know, more better looking? What does it mean? You're right. Good. It means what? Oh, you're talking about the, the video clip. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, that, that was happening. It was it's happening. Africa, all around the globe, this stuff was happening. Um, muchacho with the mustache. You. <laughs> what'd, you what'd you get? Um, how like, embedded God is with America. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. He's all over. You're right. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gomez. <laughs> what'd you get tonight? Being gay is not good. It's not. It's a sin. Right? There's, there's, it's not... It's not bashing. It's just, listen, don't think, uh, I, I, I went to a, a high school on Island, Christian high school, uh, maybe five years ago, 10 years ago, I can't remember. But uh, I talked to the upperclassmen because they were going to graduate soon. And I talked to them for 90 minutes. I brought up homosexuality one time. And when we got done, I do throwbacks like this right here. And I said, <coughs> what's your takeaway? And all these idiots said, you hate gay people. I said, what? How did because you said homosexuality is a sin. I didn't say that, and I had to correct them. I said, what's wrong with y'all? Y'all don't know the Word of God. How dare you support and endorse and advocate a sin? And they're like, whoa. I mean, when you put it that way, maybe you had something. Maybe you were right. What'd you get in the back? Yeah. That's good, good. What'd you get? Giuseppe. Oh, America was the first nation to self go over just them and go like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was it was an experiment because no one had done it before and say, Can we do this? And they say the only way you're gonna do it is that you, you maintain good character. Right? What'd you get? You see that no look? I there was a no look, man, it hit you right in the face. What'd you get tonight? That, that's true. Yeah, true. Quentin, you're, you're right. There was a lot more to it, but yeah, that's summary. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was, America was an experiment. Joe, what'd you get? AC was invented in America. Woohoo, baby! <laughs> yeah, baby! <laughs> the guy who invented AC. His, name, his last name was Carrier. You guys ever seen Carrier on ACs? Big old AC units? Yeah. Carrier. Oh, see that one? That's him. I, I really learned uh, the difference between, well, true rights are from God, you know, not yeah. from government. It's exa- the government's not like that. Government can't give rights. Government doesn't have any rights to give. That's why it says we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. And, and they're endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. What'd you get? So, I mean, kind of just how a lot of people don't realize how much Christianity actually, not just shaped, but was the founding, was the foundation of America. Yes, even, absolutely. Even whenever I was a little younger, before I found, found God again, every historical conversation I have with someone regarding America. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have to agree with that. Totally have to agree with that. History without the Word of God, you're going to get it wrong. It's history with history with the Word of God, and you're going to get some under, you're going to get some great under deep understanding. Dennis, what'd you get? I have. A, you want to use the Bible to fact check with the Word of God? So yeah. Just understanding what the Bible wants us to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible's my foundation. Yeah, the Bible is my fixed point of reference. It's my foundation. What did you guys get? Recon all over here. <laughs> all right, I wrote it down. The great oh. experiment. The, the great level, experiment. The level of God you have right now is your fault. Yeah. The, well, the level of God that you have, you have right now is your fault. It's not God. You know, it says draw near to him and he draws near to you. So the degree to which you draw near is the degree to which he's going to give himself and reveal himself to you. Chase him with all you got, man. Ray, what'd you have? Uh, that, was, that was one thing that I was going to say, like when you said in the beginning, is the degree that you see God is the degree that he reveals himself. 
that I, I've learned that personally. And then, uh, uh, the Manifest Destiny too, like I was taught in, history, uh, in my history class that it, it was God's will for Manifest Destiny and I was kind of surprised when you um, put up like the definitions of Manifest Destiny and said nothing about God. Right. That's good. They, they try to pervert Manifest Destiny and it was, it was a powerful, powerful thing from God. God wants the gospel throughout the whole world. Wade, what'd you get? Oh, I like that fun fact about the first legal slave owner. Okay. Yeah, Anthony Johnson. That's a good one. Look him up, man. Look him up. There's all kind of YouTube videos. Anybody else? Okay, so that was a lot, but you know, I hit you, I hit you with three barrels tonight. Get it? That three barrel shotgun? America. Um, don't forget about Monday night. Come on out. Monday night. Schwab Food Court, 1900. And uh, we'll, we'll, some of the stuff, fixed band ass, will go over. Um, it, it'll be probably pertaining to America and maybe some of the questions about. Anyway, yeah, just come on, Monday night. All right, so I'm going to, let me pray for you guys. Um, and Sandy, is it, we good? Okay. Okay. So you see, you guys see how I, how, how I roll? Yeah. There's, huh? Yes, dear? Huh? Dear? <laughs> yes, dear? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Hey, if we haven't met, my name is Joe. Uh, I just want to talk to you guys real quick. Um, if you're here last week, we started doing the worship band. Yeah. You know, we're not, it's not for performance band, it's a worship band. Yeah. Um, if you have that music ability, like I, I wish that we could play tonight, we weren't able to do it, go on the field and everything. But uh, if you have that musical ability and you feel that God's calling you to use those gifts for His glory, which I believe that the gifts we are given, we should use yeah. all that for His glory. Yeah. Um, come talk to me, come talk to Pastor Nick. Like, I, I don't care. Okay, I care about how well, well you can play or sing, but like, don't be afraid of your level of ability to come to yeah. Like, I want to get you guys up here. Um, I'm on UDP. I'm not going to be here that much longer. So I, my goal is to try and get enough people yeah. involved that it's not just while we're here for another month and a half. And yeah. So come talk to me. Yeah. I'm glad to meet you all. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to bless the food, and then we're going to... Again, don't forget about Monday nights. Let me lift you up. So, Father, I thank you for these men right now, Lord. Father, I lift these men up to you, Father, and I see warriors. Every one of them, they're warriors. You put in, it, you put in them a heart of a warrior, a heart of a champion. And so, Father, I thank you these men. There's a mantle of leadership on every one of them. And, Father, I thank you, Lord. They don't take that mantle lightly. They take it serious. You called them to be fathers, Lord. Not just fathers of, of their own personal families, but fathers uh, to, to make disciples, and so, Father, I thank you, Lord, even as you disciple and father them, that they know how to go out and disciple and father, father other men. So, Father, fill them with your spirit. Fill them with faith. Fill them with, 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 with your forgiveness. Father, with, with great works. Draw them by your spirit. Father, I pray grace. I pray favor on them. And, Father, I thank you for the food. I thank you that that food is blessed for us right now, Father. It's sanctified. It's set apart for our nourishment, Lord. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, that... You've been here tonight, and you're speaking to our hearts. We're all a work in progress, and you're not done with us. We bless you. We thank you. We glorify you. We praise you all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. 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 Give three people a high five and tell them, God bless America. God bless America.